Bivol almost landed double the percentage of power punches that Baturbiev did on him. He landed 50% of his power shots. Bivol dominated the statistics. He landed a higher percentage of his jabs, of his power punches, of his total punches. And there was only one round in the entire fight where Baturbiev landed a higher percentage of power shots. And that was round 8. And the other 11 rounds went to Dmitry Bivol for power punches. And he also outlanded him. In every single round apart from rounds 3 and 8, he landed a higher percentage of jabs than Baturbiev. And in this next example, you're about to see that Bivol actually withstood the physicality of Baturbiev as well, using his forearm to create separation and deny him close range positions. And according to TNT statistics, Bivol landed roughly the same amount of punches as Baturbiev in the whole fight, throwing less than half the amount of punches as well. So in terms of efficiency, Bivol was a lot more efficient. And you could argue that that power punching statistic really puts things into context, given that the narrative coming out and the main argument for Baturbiev winning was about his power punches and the cumulative effect they were having on Bivol. So given how potent a feature that was of the case for Baturbiev winning, how effective his power punches were, Dmitry Bivol landed 50% of his and Arta landed 30%. And it's also worth contextualizing that Arta Baturbiev won... No, he landed 30% of his power punches, and normally, opponents land 13, 1-3% of their power shots on Dmitry Bivol. In fact, he's actually ranked the lowest in world boxing for that, pound for pound. Dmitry Bivol is the hardest fighter to hit cleanly in world boxing. Number two is Shakur Stevenson at 13.7%. That's how many power shots... As a percentage, Shakur's opponents land on him. And for Bivol, his opponents land 13% of their power shots. So roughly one in eight. Now, for Baturbiev to have landed 30, which is double that, 13 times 2, 26, over double what the average number of shots that people land on Bivol, power shots in a fight, for him to have done that, also speaks volumes about the efficiency of Baturbiev's work in that it bucks the trend of what people tend to have in terms of success with their biggest shots against Dmitry Bivol. So that's worth contextualizing and evaluating whose power punches were more efficient. Now, the data shows 50% of Bivol's power punches were landed and Baturbiev's 30 so, not far off double for Bivol, but at the same time, statistics don't always reflect the entirety of a fight, in that if Bivol landed, hypothetically, 9 or 10 power shots that stunned Baturbiev, but didn't hurt him massively, and Baturbiev landed, let's say three or four that sent Bivol backpedaling and notably made him adjust his body positioning where his spine wasn't neutral, he was leaning forwards and trying to get a wind in his sails again. Statistically, you'd look at that and go, well, Bivol landed 10 power shots in the round, but Terbiev only landed three or four. So quantitative data would suggest that um, Baturbiev's work was half that of Bivol's. But qualitative data would indicate otherwise potentially in that Dmitry Bivol wasn't able to back up Arta Baturbiev for a significant stretch of time in that fight. Whenever he put his shots together and Baturbiev was on the ropes, Bivol couldn't keep him there. He couldn't occupy the centre of the ring for more than a 30 second period. Over the course of 36 minutes in a fight, Bivol couldn't occupy that centre of the ring and dictate the terms on which the bout was fought in terms of ring generalship, which is a key criteria of scoring fights. And so that sort of context being put around it does limit the extent to which these sorts of statistics can be measured on solely in isolation for judging 
boxing fights in that respect or fights more generally across combat sports. So that's a key distinction, I think, that enters play in that there's qualitative and quantitative data. Notwithstanding, however, Bivol dominated all the statistics and he landed a high percentage of jabs in, I believe, every round apart from one or two. Beterbiev landed a lower percentage of jabs. He only landed a high percentage of power shots in the eighth round. In the other 11 rounds, Dmitry Bivol was landing a higher percentage of power shots. So that would lean in Bivol's favour in that it was widely dispersed, his body of work with success with power punching. It wasn't concentrated over a few specific rounds and the weight of the argument for him in that respect is more widely and evenly dispersed across 12 rounds and so there's more scope for saying he won on a round-by-round -round basis more so than a late flurry or success in the back half of the fight and that's something that works against Artur Baterbiev's argument in that he finished the last two championship rounds strong but you don't get weighted more points for winning the championship rounds than the 10 preceding so on that basis that uh subdues the extent to which Baterbiev's credit that he got for winning those last two rounds holds weight and so in light of that it puts into context perhaps a recency bias you could argue in that Baterbiev finished strong that was the lasting impression of the television viewers in there and you could argue judges alike as they scored it for him and so if that tilted the balance of play in a very close fight perhaps the way it ended with the recency bias element swayed people's opinions in that respect but in terms of isolated tactical success it should be worth sorry it should be noted that Dmitry Bivol separated a number of close range interactions that had potential for clinches and Potential for Artur Baterbiev to get off those short, sweet shots at close range in the pocket that he likes to do. He created separation using his forearm and also talking Baterbiev's body in a couple of instances. I believe they're around about six or seven if memory serves. One I physically showed at the beginning of the video and that illustrated Baterbi sorry, Bivol using his lead forearm to push off Artur Baterbiev's body weight and stop him from entering even closer at range. It created separation as a barrier. And given that, again, going back to that narrative about Baterbiev and the power and the force, Baterbiev is considered a more physical specimen than Bivol. However, Bivol was the one pushing him off whenever they got very, very close. And his ability to navigate Baterbiev in the opposite direction at very close proximity was perhaps one of the most understated elements of this fight in that the success he had there has been to my knowledge largely undocumented I don't believe I, I haven't seen an analysis so far that acknowledged that for how significant it was and the potential ramifications it had later down the line if Baterbiev found himself on the inside and then landed those shots that he could have put B that he could have put Bivol away with that's something that definitely went under the radar and a worthy point of consideration for any rematch analysis as well Bivol wasn't manhandled and outmuscled at close range in a way where outside of punching power Baterbiev is assumed to be the superior combatant in the physicality and strength department as a whole it's all encompassing power punching, physical strength, talking of the body, that whole bracket, that whole umbrella. Artur Baterbiev is considered the superior athlete. So for Bivol to have had success there does speak volumes. However, as we said, there's two sides to every story. And that's why the video prior to this I uploaded was about Bivol losing. And I was Baterbiev's lawyer in that court. Here I'm Bivol's lawyer in this court and over the course of these two videos that should broaden 
the discussion and so you guys see the advantages and disadvantages of each argument so you yourselves can form your own views about which holds more weight and base your decision off there thereafter but just before we conclude I believe that is there one or two more points I want to make or have I already said them let me have a think we spoke about the pushing away uh, we spoke about the statistics and isolation and the element of power punching relative efficiency for Bivol. But there is one other element that should be noted as well. And that's body language and the overall optics of things. Now, Bivol dominated statistics in just about every category. Bar aggression, I believe Baterbiev had a plus 10% differential, differential, which essentially means in terms of aggressive output, he had a 10% higher punch volume in terms of the genre of punching, as in hard punching, power shots, more so than soft pity patty, soft jab kind of thing. And he was landing the more aggressive, well, sorry, he was throwing the more aggressive shots as a higher percentage of his total shots overall, whereas Bivol threw more lighter shots, quote-unquote, jabs, uh, lead hooks, and things of that nature. So, from an optic standpoint, it comes down to, do you weight the cumulative total of what Bivol did, statistically, and also... Early on in the fight, he was dictating the terms on which the bout was bought. Sorry, the bout was fought, but Baterbiev is a notoriously slow starter, which inherently limits that argument to a degree. Although, with that said, it should also be noted that Bivol, with the jab, had a lot of success, but it wasn't enough to keep Baterbiev off him. But what it was enough to do was make Baterbiev keep having to reset and... Even with his L steps, he was a little bit more careful in how he looked to go about his body of work against Bivol than he normally is. After L stepping, he normally takes a step to the right and waits for the opponent to come in and and then he baits them in on that. He did it with Joe Smith Jr. and Callum Smith as well. And then he lands that rear hook as they come in off the L step to his right. Bivol didn't take that bait. And so Baterbiev had to think a little bit more and be a bit more scientific with how he set up his traps in that regard. So I think on that note, uh, I've exercised off the top of my head what I've needed to and uh, been Baterbiev's lawyer in the previous video, Bivol's lawyer in this one. And uh, you guys are the judges, so you guys can make that decision for yourselves. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer for you in future videos or the extended breakdowns, just tweet them over to me. That's at ElusiveRaf on Twitter. If you guys want to see my daily fight analysis uploads, I upload those every day to Instagram and that's at Elusive 2.0 on Instagram.